everybody, how are you? Welcome back or welcome to Elderflower Stitches. My name is Susie and this is my my name is Susie and this is my little corner of the internet where I talk about knitting, sewing, yarn dyeing and other crafty things and general life stuff really. Um, thank you very much for popping along to see what I've been up to. I got into quite a good routine of doing a podcast every Sunday for a few weeks, which was really lovely. And then things went a little bit crazy um, in the world, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So I had to prioritise preparing for um, working from home as a teacher and my pupils working from home as well. So. I kind of had to put that at the front of things and focus on that whilst um, everything was settling into its new routine. It still feels very, very strange. Um, and now I'm on my Easter break, which is normally a time that by the point that I get to it, I'm thinking, oh, brilliant. I get two weeks now of having a lion. <laughs> going to the toilet whenever you want to, which something as a teacher is something of a luxury. Um, but it didn't really feel that way when we broke up for Easter this time. It was a bit of um, a bit of a strange feeling and it's all just feeling really odd. And I'm sure you're all feeling the same. I've been watching podcasts and vlogs and it's soothing to know that everyone is experiencing pretty similar emotions about it really. Um, I think like lots of other people who enjoy knitting and quiet, calm hobbies, part of me um, is I guess making the most of it and em embracing the extra crafting time, but I'm the type of person who my default is not necessarily being sociable. I'm nice to people, I'm, you know, I can be sociable, but my default is more to be on my own or with a small group of like close friends or family. Um, however, the more I avoid social situations, the more, the more I avoid them and it becomes a bit of a round and round thing for me. So I'm actually better off pushing myself into being more sociable, which is something I can't really do at the moment. So it's all a bit strange. Right, anyway, <laughs> I've waffled on. I don't know how much of that I'll keep because I just sort of rambled. Um, okay, <laughs> let's talk about knitting. And I have got two very exciting finished objects to share with you today. So last time I spoke to you, I was working on perhaps the second sock or perhaps I was on my first sock of these um, point shoes, fade socks. I can't get my words out today. Right. So I knit these in um, my point shoes fade mini set. So it's a set of five minis that fades from peach all the way down to like this really pale um, peachy colour. And then I decided to put the darker peach back up on the cuff again. And I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I think that the colours um, fade really nicely and it's really sweet. So very chuffed with that. I'm probably going to have a go with some of the other fade sets as well. So I did um, a combination. This is like my favourite vanilla sock. So I've got a beanie, no, not a beanie toe, a whirlwind toe. And then just vanilla, 60 stitches. And then I did a godet heel. So the godet heel is from a pattern by Amy and Jules. And they wrote a sock pattern together called the Soul Sisters Sock. And this is the heel in the pattern. And it just is so much easier. Oh, something on there, sorry. 
it's so much easier for me than a wrap and turn heel so I think this is called a short row heel I think and then I just went into stocking stitch and then a little one by one twisted rib I'm a big fan of twisted rib so I've done both of those now um, I haven't actually washed and blocked them yet I'm just putting on the blockers because they look pretty <laughs> um, these ones are from dandelion and dogwood so I'll give those a wash and a block and then I'll probably be wearing those soon so that's finished object number one finished object number two I am incredibly proud of so I started this project last summer perhaps and it is my very first jumper it's the Susie jumper which is a pattern by um, a long avocana who's on YouTube and Instagram and you can buy her patterns on Ravelry and the pattern itself is for fingering weight held with a strand of mohair and I decided to do the um, what is this called yoke maybe <laughs> the top part in loom wool white peach and I then went into my own yarn and I would say this is, I dyed it last summer when I was making, when I started making this. So um, I wouldn't say it's the same as point shoes now. It's probably closer to the pastel pride peach colour. And yeah, I didn't really fade into it. I just sort of swapped colours. Um I think it works quite nicely actually almost looks like colour blocking but the colours sort of match together and I used a tip from somebody and I'm so sorry I can't remember who it was I used a tip for the sleeve decreases so each time I did a sleeve decrease on my first sleeve I put one of these little bulb stitch markers on and then as I did the decreases on the second sleeve rather than getting a new marker I took the marker off the first sleeve and it was a really nice like visual like a visual timetable <laughs> it was a really nice visual to see I was getting closer and closer to having the sleeve finished and um, I knew how many decreases I'd done how many I needed to do and I'm really pleased that I did that so here's the jumper I did the neckline and the cuffs and the hem in twisted rib just because I don't know it's just my favorite I just think it looks tidier than my normal ribbing and I was so excited to finish that that I've actually already cast on a second jumper yes so I need to again wash and block I also need to weave in the ends first but it's official I have finished my first ever jumper so very very pleased this jumper went on the naughty step a few times when I was knitting it because I just got a bit exhausted with it um, however I seem to have picked up a bit of speed recently when I'm just doing knit stitch and um, it's made me feel a bit more confident about taking on bigger projects okay Shall we talk about works in progress? Let's start with another pair of socks. So <laughs> this pair of socks is the pattern that I was talking about that I got the heel from, for my vanilla socks. This is the Soul Sisters pattern. So this is the stitch pattern that you get with the socks. That was a pretty random way of saying it. Okay, so it is this beautiful lace pattern, which runs all the way down the centre of the front of the sock. And this yarn is my um, March Sock Club, and it's called Primroses and Violets. Um, so it's got delicate, sort of warm golden yellows and pale green for the toe. And then I've also used it for the heel and I'll go back to it for the cuff. So it was a 100 grams 
um, skein for the sock yarn and then the 20 gram mini of the green. And this cute little progress keeper here <laughs> is from Hook and Light, um, which is a UK company and they do natural dyeing kits. I think I might actually have some more from them as well. Um, I've got one of their kits actually, it's for using madder to dye things pinky red. Um, yeah, so very cute little progress keeper. The needles, I always forget to talk about my needles. These are my go-to sock needles and they are, let me face that way so it focuses, they are Knit Pro Novas and they're 2.25. And they've got quite a long cable, so they're good for doing two at a time. Oh yes, I've gone back to doing two at a time. Because I still haven't finished my second folding bridge sock. <laughs> and I'm getting major second sock syndrome. That is the next thing on my list. I do need to finish that. But I decided to avoid second sock syndrome again. I'm going to go back to knitting two at a time. I'll show you the, the yarn. And the little coordinating mini is this lovely soft green. So that's whip number one, Soul Sister Socks in Primroses and Violets. Now, whip number two, as I mentioned, I decided to cast on another jumper after I finished my Susie jumper. And look how much I have already done. I'm really proud of this. This is another a long Abacana pattern. And this is the Matilda jumper. However, I didn't do the stitch pattern, this lovely dot stitch. I didn't do that straight away. I focused on getting the neckline and the shoulders and the raglan increases done first. And then once I was happy, I think once I'd split for the sleeves, I then thought, okay, I'm going to put the dot stitch in now. So I didn't want it to be like a sudden change. So I did the dot stitch, but more spread out. And then I got it closer together again. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, again, on my Knit Pro Novas, but these are the interchangeable ones. And the great thing about these is that rather than having to put the sleeve stitches on scrap yarn, I could just slip them onto a spare cable, a nice short cable. So when I come to doing the sleeves, most of the stitches are already on there and I just need to twist these off and put the needles on, which saves a huge amount of faffing. I still have to pick up the stitches around the neckline though, but that's fine. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Kind of already here. I'm probably going to do it um, just down to probably about the same length as this jumper. So a bit kind of cropped because it's going to be a summer jumper. Um, and I'll probably do the sleeve to maybe about here, like a, a long short sleeve just so it covers my upper arm, but probably finished just before the elbow. So it's like a little lightweight summer jumper. I have done it in a different size needle. So the pattern calls for a 3.5 millimeter needle. But I have actually gone for a 4.5, which is quite a bit different. Um, I would normally go up a size anyway, because I'm quite tight knitter. But I decided to go up an extra size because I wanted it to be really loose and drapey and floppy rather than my Susie jumper, which is quite kind of rigid, not rigid, some word, but it's quite a dense fabric. So I wanted something that's really floppy and loose and yeah, so I went up a size. Did I tell you about the yarn? No. Um, I'm knitting it in one of my colours and this is after the rain which is just on super sock and it's like um sort of an icy blue peppermint green color um yeah 
I'm loving how it's knitting up. I just love hand dyed yarns because they're never a flat, solid colour. There's always a bit of variation in there. And I love it when you can see that in the, in the garment, especially with a big garment like um, a jumper. You can see the sort of paler bits and darker bits. And I just really like, it just gives it a bit of character. And I've noticed in the shops recently, there seems to be a trend for jumpers and garments that have a similar look to them. And it, like I get it, but it kind of annoys me. I'm like, no, that's for hand knitters. <laughs> um, but obviously they're made from acrylic, so they're not as lovely anyway. Um, and I have a third whip, but this one is crochet. My goodness, <laughs> I haven't crocheted in so long. And back before all this craziness happened, I started a little knitting and crochet club at my school because I noticed a few children at playtimes and lunchtimes were doing a bit of knitting or crochet and I wanted to give them a space so they could do that and um, that I could help them with patterns and stitches and things in case their grown-ups at home perhaps aren't crafters. So I started a little lunchtime knitting club and I was helping one of the children with some crochet stitches and whilst I was helping them I realised I really like crochet. Not as much as I love knitting but sometimes I want a break from knitting and, and you're using like different muscles, it's different movements isn't it so it's quite nice to do something different. So I cast on a blanket probably should have cast on something slightly smaller to get me started but I have cast on a rather long and enormous blanket and I've done three rows <laughs> um, but here is how it's looking so far so I'm using the attic 24 granny stripe blanket pattern where you do it's a free pattern that you can find online. Um, you do a long chain stitch and then you double crochet into each chain stitch and then you do treble crochets every third double crochet and then you just treble crochet into the spaces and keep going. So I've started off in butter mint, which is what I knit my Cara hat and tinsel mitts in from my last podcast. And I'm holding it with a strand of opulence again because I just love the fabric that it makes together and how cosy is this blanket going to be. So those two are both four plies so effectively together they make a double knit DK weight. So nice and um, not chunky but you know nice and substantial and, and crochets up really quickly. I'm just using a cheap hook I think this is a prim or a pony, it's the kind of one that you can get from like CNH Fabrics or you know your, your regular craft shop and it's just a 4.5. So that's my blanket. I probably, it will probably become a scrappy blanket and what I'm thinking is um, I might do other colours and then a bit of buttermint and then back to other colours and, and just kind of whatever really whatever I feel like adding in at the time. <sighs> so that's my whips. Other things that I have planned, bear with me. <clears throat> Other things that I have planned and actually have cast on, but as a test are, is, the beautiful pattern by Cheryl Toy from Little Church Knits and it's the Gardenia Stole which is a gorgeous lace stole. Show if I can show you the other picture without showing the pattern. Now, very excitingly and very kindly, Cheryl has um, gifted me a copy of this pattern. I need to have a go at knitting in my yarn. 
but also she has given me a second copy as a giveaway which is so exciting it's the first time that i've had something donated to the podcast for a giveaway sorry about the paper wrestling i'm just going to show you another picture so beautiful so i um have had a go because there's a lot of lace work in this and I've done lace work before, but normally just knits, pearls, yarn over, that kind of thing. I've had a go at some of the stitches just to have a practice. And actually, although the pattern itself, you look at the chart and think, wow, there's so many different stitches. Um, it's quite systematic. So, you know, with the way that the lace is, you're obviously like going in and going out. So there's sort of repetition but just a different number of stitches and that sort of thing. So it's actually less complicated than it looks, perhaps. I don't know. But I'm learning some new stitches from doing it, which is really exciting. And um, I'm really keen to make a good start. So yesterday I had a play with it and just cast on the right number of stitches, looked at where I'd want my markers to go had a go at the first few rows of lace work and that's kind of the best way for me to learn lace work if I am like right I'm casting on and I'm making it and then something goes wrong or I don't know how to do a stitch pattern it really puts me off the project so I, I kind of cast on the right number of stitches and just had a go for the sake of checking I could do the stitches learning how to do the stitches without this pressure of this is the final piece. So now that I've done that and I'm confident to do the first, probably the first like 20 or more rows of lace quite comfortably, I will sit and cast it on today and actually start my gardenia stole proper, which is very exciting. And this is the yarn that I've chosen to do it in. So this is point shoes in my super sock base and I decided I could have used opulence and dyed some of that up like I did with my <laughs> it's there my boho blush however this beautiful lace work needs a nice high twist yarn so that you can get all that stitch definition so I thought actually super sock will show off all of that lovely lace work <sighs> so I'm really excited um to get that knitted up and also to do a giveaway. If you would like to win this pattern, then comment underneath this video with which yarn you would knit this. You could tell me the actual base and the dyer and the colourway, or you could just tell me which colour you'd knit it in. Um, it's up to you. It's designed to be knit with two strands of lace weight yarn held together. But um, Cheryl worked out for me that I could do it in a strand of four ply. So you could do the same if you wanted to. Um, how exciting. That's, I'm just, oh, when Cheryl messaged me to say, I'd love to give you a pattern for a giveaway. I was just like, oh my goodness. I showed my husband. I showed my mum. <laughs> it's like, this is so exciting. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, Cheryl. And um, I will announce the winner in a couple of weeks. I'll give you a couple of weeks to... Um, for everyone to have seen the video and um, and entered. So if you want to win a copy of the pattern, then comment below which colour you would knit it up in. And um, if you if it's one of my yarns that you put in the comment um, and you win the pattern, I will give you the yarn as well. Ta -da! Right. Oh, what's next? How are we doing for time? Not bad doing okay. What else have I got to tell you? Should we do some shop news? I wanted to just start off by talking about some comments that I had from my last video. I thought I kind of always start a video anew as if like no, no other video came before. <laughs> no like sort of follow up. So quite a few people um, commented after I explained why I have a KitchenAid in my craft room. I've actually moved it now and it's it's over there. Um, but 
you can pop back and see it in my last video. I used my KitchenAid for twisting skeins into nice tidy little, um, that's a good example actually, that's a very neat one, <laughs> but twisting them up into, um, I don't know, what do you call it when it's like this? A skein, I guess. Um, and being able to get a really consistent result by using the KitchenAid and you just count how many times it turns. And as long as you do the same amount for each skein you do, they will look really uniform. So I had lots of nice comments um, thanking me for sharing that tip. So you're very welcome. Hope that you have fun trying it out. <laughs> Just remember to use the, the kneading hook rather than any of the other attachments. Um, what else? Um, I had some comments about Advents again. Yes, they will be happening um and i'm just thinking about how best to organize that and what i want what i want that to look like whether i want to offer um a sort of installment option because it's quite a lot of money to just put down in one go um and how that would look through etsy is like my main thing so Yes, that is something I'm still working on and I will let you know when I've decided what I'm going to do with it. I think those are the main questions and comments, but um, thank you as always for all of your lovely comments. I read them all and enjoy them all and um, I'm going to get better at replying since I have a bit more time on my hands. Um, yes. <laughs> so last video I was telling you all about the sock clubs that were starting and um, that got off to a great start. Had some really lovely feedback on both March and April sock club. March you have seen. So this is April's colourway which is called Bluebell Railway because lots of lovely bluebells come up in April. And near us, we have somewhere called Bluebell Railway, which is like an old um, steam train, steam railway that you can go on. And um, it goes through this beautiful woodland area, which in late spring is absolutely carpeted with bluebells. I'm going to take it out of that because I think it's just easier. So this is... April Sock Club, which is called Bluebell Railway. So it's got lovely um, sagey, grassy green for the bluebell leaves, and then this really sweet purpley, lilacy, yummy colour. And then it comes with a little coordinating mini, so slightly darker green. Um, shall I open it up and I can show you how the colours look in the skein? Because I think it's always nice to see what they actually look like. So you've got, got that bit speckly, lighter bits and darker bits. And then the same with the green, got some darker green speckles and some lighter bits. Um, yeah, and then the matching little coordinating mini to go with it. So that's not how I twist them <laughs> when I um, twist them to be packaged up. That is just so it doesn't get in a tangle. So that's April Sock Club. May's Sock Club um, is going to be on its way out soon. So if you want to catch a May Sock Club, there is a listing for that in my Etsy shop. Um, you may also spot when you're in there this new colour which is called Posy. This is Posy as a sock set and it's just a one of a kind colour. I mean I could try and make it again but I didn't like write down the recipe as such. So I was just sort of had some dyes left over from things that I was dyeing up and I just thought I'm going to put all of those together and see what happens. So it's pinks, purples, corals, peaches and then all of that mixed together for the coordinating mini. I think the actual sock sets have sold out but there are some full skeins left of that so that's posy. 
other exciting news. I feel like I need to show you these with their matching sock yarn. So I'll try that. A um, couple of videos ago, maybe, I mentioned the uh, Pastel Pride Ultimate Bundle of my lovely pastel rainbow. And I have now dyed it up as a bundle of mohair. Oh my goodness. Look at that. So gorgeous. So fluffy and squishy. So we have got pink, the peach yellow which i think is probably my favorite yellow ever green blue and a lavender and then magenta which is like a purpley pink <gasps> shall i show you them with their matching sock yarn so you can see what they look like together <clears throat> so we have the pink and peach so this peach is in the same color family as point shoes but it's a bit more saturated so it's just the darker one so you could use the two together if um, you like them this is yellow and green And blue. I love how I love how the colour takes different on different bases. This is probably not as dark as it's showing up on the screen. Um, so you get this kind of the the mohair version is always this like slightly more delicate version of the colour. And magenta. oh my gosh look <sighs> oh so beautiful <laughs> um anything else i need to tell you about shock news don't think so i'm still going i'm still doing um yarns ready to ship just at random whenever i'm having a um a dyeing session i kind of do a few extras as ready to ship still taking custom orders but I'm limiting it to only the bases that I have got in stock rather than just whichever, just in case um, the yarn supplier that I use has to shut at any point. I wouldn't want to be stuck not being able to fulfil an order. So there we go. That's shop news. I have some other exciting shop news that I'm going to share um, throughout the week. I've decided to do some, calling them studio vlogs, though I don't really have a studio. <laughs> this is my workspace, this is my sewing room, my yarn packaging room. It's not really a studio, but I'm calling them studio vlogs. And they will be sort of my dyeing process, the packaging, different things I might talk about, ideas that I have coming up all of that sort of stuff. So you're in, if you're interested in the that side of my life, then you're very welcome to watch them. Some videos that I have coming up this week are testing out new packaging ideas. So I have some new things arriving this week in terms of packaging and probably another dyeing session. What else am I doing this week? Packaging up orders and bits and bobs like that really maybe a bag making session so yeah if you're interested in the kind of more creative etsy side of my life and what i get up to then hopefully you'll enjoy those i also have a couple of other videos planned for this week um just bonus ones really because i've got a bit of extra time over the easter holidays i'm going to do a little stash um i don't know like a what's in my yarn stash video just go through the yarns that i've got and the patterns i've got and then talk about some of the pairings that i'm planning up planning up i'm planning 
to do so what yarns I will use with which sock patterns and that kind of thing um mainly to make me feel like I haven't just bought loads of yarn but I've got some yarn which is you know going to make a project at some point so that's my husband oh bless he's gone back to work today he had um a week off last week um but yeah he's back at work today he works in a hospice so it's pretty pretty tough tough job most of the time but i think it's potentially you know being impacted by everything that's going on as well so waffle waffle <laughs> i think that's it yes thank you so much for watching and i will see you again very soon and take care of yourselves stay safe stay home and if you're watching this from the future well done we made it through <laughs> um yeah it's lovely to speak to you and i will see you soon